Hey, welcome back to the Urban Monk, Dr. Pedram Shojai. Uh, man, it's been a while. Um, sorry. I have been uh, finishing up a docu-series that um, has been taking a lot of my time um, for good reason. It's awesome. It is um, beautiful. It is uh, really informative and um, it's been a lot of work. And so, you know, things that are worth doing are worth doing right. And this is a great one. Consider it... Uh, this podcast on steroids, really, because I went and interviewed over 70 uh, scientists, doctors, patients, experts on uh, the subject of the microbiome, and uh, really got into it. So um, do me a favor, actually, as you're listening to this, you are, um, you know, hopefully on a device or something, go to well.org slash series, um, S-E-R-I-E-S, well.org slash series, and register for the series so that um, uh, it comes out November 27th. It's a nine-day free series um, that we will air for free during that era, and then it um, you know, costs money. And so uh, you uh, want to see this because what I did was I captured the hottest topic in medicine as we know it today uh, in a way that, um, you know, it's like I got to go up in these ivory towers and then translate what these guys are talking about into stuff that normal people could understand, um, which isn't actually that easy, right? Because they're like way up in their heads and doing all kinds of stuff that's fascinating. But, you know, they're talking, talking shop, if you will. And so really saying, okay, so what is all this new science? What does it mean? And what does it mean for me now? And one of the things that really drove me is uh, if you live uh, in the Western world, in America in particular, the core issue with our system is it just takes so damn long for information to trickle down to your doctor's office, an average of 17 years. And so look, if you get a 10-year-old daughter that is suffering with something, right? Whatever that something is, your doctor, you know, should you have a normal doctor, and most people do, uh, won't be talking about this until she's 27. That means her entire childhood is gone, right? And she's already probably going to be dealing with issues of infertility and, you know, self-confidence because of acne or whatever it was that kind of came as a sequelae or, you know, secondary thing to this illness. And it's just, it's just unconscionable, right? It's just not right. And so um, how do we make a shortcut there? And how do we bring that science uh, to you in an actionable way that's going to help you in your life, but then not, you know, get into this kind of wild world of hype? Uh, And that became the last year of my life because, you know, what happens is you get a couple of these studies that come out, people get excited, the supplement companies go make up some bullshit and tell you that they got miracle and a pill and people go buying it and um, it's just unethical. So there's been a lot of that um, that we had to dispel because the answer to, you know, all of these chronic health issues isn't just some probiotic supplement that you, you know, don't know about yet. Sorry. Spoiler alert. You still have to, you know, live probiotically versus take probiotics all the time. Uh, But when it comes down to living probiotically, uh, there are unbelievable amount of studies showing what it is that, that works, what's effective, what's going to be effective for you long term, what's going to help you with your immunity, what's going to help you with your anxiety and depression. All of these solutions are found in the microbiome, which is these trillions of organisms living inside our body, on our skin, in all of our canals and orifices, and even on our organs, right? Um, we used to think blood and the bacteria equaled sepsis, which meant you were dying. Now, uh, sorry, bacteria in the blood. Now we realize that, you know, there's bacteria kind of everywhere and they act as messengers and they're helping keep this web of life going. Um, So I've actually found a lot of kind of esoteric implications in all this. Like there's no way you could see yourself as separate or distinct from nature after understanding this. And one of the things that's been happening is... (laughs) The, this understanding of health that we've had has come from the allopathic model, which was really, you know, kind of, uh, 
one of many schools of thought. And then what happened is right around World War I, World War II, we got really good um, at understanding that penicillin can save lives so our guys can you know feel better and run out and shoot their guys more often. Uh, and we got better at surgery because we learned how to sterilize and we just you know advanced in that. Um, those things are wonderful for battlefield medicine. They're wonderful for trauma and ER. Um, and they've proved to be atrociously ineffective for chronic disease. So as the cost of healthcare goes up, the incidence of chronic disease also is going up and there's no end in sight, which means it's going to bankrupt our country and, and bad things are happening. So what lens are we looking through? And so looking through that lens, you get people you know arguing till they're blue in the face about healthcare reform. What they're talking about is healthcare finance reform and who pays these exorbitant bills on you know treatments that aren't curing anything. Um, is really kind of a bullshit conversation. The real conversation is what have we been doing wrong? What have we been missing? And the answer, it turns out, has been we've been missing the life, the currency of life, the information of life, the the encyclopedia of life um, that has been right under our noses this whole time. We couldn't see it. It was microscopic. We just assumed there were bugs. You're supposed to, you know, let, tolerate them at best and nuke them, uh, you know, every time they get out of hand. And we've realized that that approach has really mirrored our approach to ecology. And one of the things that um, has really been inspirational for me is watching how this science of the microbiome is, um, you know, it's irrefutable stuff coming up out of, you know, the laboratories all over the country. I mean, I was at Harvard, Mass General, Johns Hopkins, Stanford, Caltech, I mean, UCLA, you just keep, you just name them, right? I've been to all these top research institutions. They're all just going crazy about this microbiome research. It's not a fad. It is the future. And a lot of women, actually, a lot of women running these kind of big NIH grants and a lot of women, uh, you know, leading the thinking in this. Why? Because we are now facing a new type of thinking that is driven by ecological models. So they've borrowed, uh, you know, some of this kind of science over from, you know, the, these ecology uh, schools of thought where it's like, oh, interesting. So Yellowstone's fallen apart because we took out the wolves. We put in the wolves that controls the deer population and then they don't trample the weeds that then disappear and create, you know, move, move, you know, shifting riverbeds, which destroy other things, right? So you get all this kind of like top-down problems that you resolve by introducing certain predators we're finding the same thing is happening in these systems. It's not like, okay, so what, 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 what probiotic do I take? No, it's an it's a environment, and there are trillions of species that interact as a community. So the real question is, how, what players can I introduce and feed, and which players should I starve and or you know, have to selectively target so that I could create the ecology and, and practice gut forestry, if you will, in a way that's going to be um, supportive of my long-term gains, right? And and which which bacteria do I feed first, so that they can then produce energy and byproducts that then feed the rest of the bacteria that help feed me? Uh, and it's become this really interesting, interesting model of understanding pretty much how every chronic disease has an association with the microbiome and how uh, resolving microbiome issues or dysbiosis is showing incredible promise for every chronic disease. Every, every specialty out there is now looking at the microbiome. So it's, uh, I mean, I'm jazzed about it, as you can probably tell by now, right, is I'm really, really, really interested in spreading this information because, you know, we're learning a lot about genetics. I mean, there's, you know, 10 times as many genes being expressed, if not 100 times as many genes being expressed by our bacteria than our own personal genes, which puts into question whether we're fully human we're, you know, or what, what is really running the show. Uh, and uh, it is giving us access to information that we had otherwise not been able to, to really get into because of the sheer volume of data. I mean, you have trillions of organisms with, you know, hundreds of, and if not thousands of genes being expressed with different uh, products coming from those genes. So we've used AI, big data computing, and all sorts of things to really make sense of this. But it's this real interesting confluence uh, in time, if you will, of this understanding that oh my God, nature is the answer, nature holds the answers, and nature isn't just in the Amazon, nature is in my belly. Um, and we now have the technology to understand and map it 
like we've never had before in the past. So this really is like a, a salvation moment for humanity that's helping us understand how to harbor life inside of our bodies and how to respect life outside of our bodies. And it's really shifting the way we look at health and each other, frankly, um, so much to it. I mean, I, you know, this, it's a, it's a nine part series. Like I'm not going to get into all of it here, obviously. Um, so again, I invite you to watch it at well.org slash series. Um, but you know, suffice it to say, um, there's a couple concepts in there that I think are really appropriate for my urban monks out there. Right. Which is when you start to see increased diversity and strength of the right bacterial colonies in someone's gut, they start talking about these words um, like tolerance. Your system has more tolerance against outside invaders. Your system is more tolerant against you know certain you know things swinging in different directions, and you become just more adaptive. And when you look at the word tolerance, as someone's system becomes tolerant, they have the capacity to kind of withstand insults and and just be healthy and happy with you know their kind of microbiome modulation of things that are hitting them. I mean, the microbiome helps you detoxify. It helps, you know, um, uh, block foreign invaders. It helps build your immunity and, and inform it. It helps you digest foods. It helps you produce energy. I mean, it just goes on and on and on. And as you have healthy microbiome in your system, which, you know, our experts show you, you know, in detail what to do and how to do it. As you have that, your system becomes more, more tolerant. People's anxiety and depression starts to go away. But the one thing that I'm going to start studying after this series is over is as our antibiotic use goes up state by state, um, not just in, you know, the amoxicillin you take for the occasional, like, you know, cough or ear infection, but the pounds of antibiotics found in our meats, the tons of antibiotics that are sprayed on our crops in the form of glyphosate. As we see more of this, we see more chronic disease, we see more cancer, and we're also seeing a rise in autism, ADD, um, diabetes, all of these things. And there's really strong correlation to a lot of this in, in the series that'll blow your, blow your mind. Um, but we're also seeing a rise in intolerance, period, right? Um, so sociological e intolerance, right? Race intolerance, idea intolerance. Um, Americans can't even tolerate each other. It's like, are you red team or blue team? Oh, okay, right? Oh, if you're red team, then, you know, are you Episcopalian or are you, you know, what, right? And it's just you keep diverting the traffic to the point where you hate everybody because you've become intolerant to pretty much all things. That ain't right. And so if you start looking at the correlations here, um, you know, there's some interesting things this science is pointing to, and a lot of it has to do with re-inoculating nature and earth back into your system, and you start to see people chill the fuck out. You start to see them get along. You start to see them understand the diversity and the point of views of the people on the other side of the quote-unquote fence. And so there, there's some really interesting implications in this work that we I want to talk about after the series because I know too much and you don't know this yet. Um, and, and, you know, no matter how much you've studied this, nobody has put together a body of work on the microbiome this robust. And I'm not saying this to congratulate myself. It just hasn't been done. So all the scientists in my in my series are super excited about this because this, this topic um, really needs a lot more attention than it's gotten. And it is that revolutionary, right? So it's really important that you're up on this. Everyone's going to be talking about it. You should be the first, right? Because you should understand that this is where everything is going. And the more you incorporate this in your life, the better you're going to feel, the more tolerant you're going to be, the happier you're going to be, and the, the easier it's going to be to be the living example of this for the people in and around you who are sick. Because I know you know people who are sick because everyone's fucking sick, right? Um, and so what do we do about it? Either we sit around and wait for the drug companies and the insurance companies to, you know, guard the hen house, or we step out of that parasitic cycle, live, support the life inside of us, and live brighter and stronger, and then keep passing this message of life on to other humans and bring life back, right? So we're fighting for life. We're fighting for the life inside of us. We're nurturing the life inside of us, and then we're nurturing the life all around us by supporting the types of farming practices, the types of ranching practices that are um, healthy for us and the planet. So um, 
that's it. I invite you to check out the series. I'm going to be deep in it for the next couple of weeks. I just haven't had a chance to do a podcast in a while. Uh, go to well.org slash series, S-E-R-I-E-S. Opt in to get an invite. And, uh, you know, so some of the email systems are, are getting wacky. So uh, go in there and then on the thank you page, there'll be like SMS and uh, Facebook reminders. Just find a way to make sure you get my reminders so that you don't miss a single one of these episodes. Um, You don't want to miss this. I'll see you next time.